Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today, I talk about the Cloud Bleed vulnerability. Last Friday, researchers from Cloudflare and a researcher from Google disclosed a vulnerability that affects anyone using Cloudflare's content distribution network. Basically, the vulnerability, which was discovered by a well-known researcher named Tavis Ormandy, is very similar to Heartbleed, which is another vulnerability you may remember from a few years ago. Heartbleed, in specific, was a SSL TLS implementation flaw that could allow a bad guys to leverage this flaw to get some information to leak from a HTTPS website. Specifically, their hope was to get things like uh, passwords and digital certificates to leak from HTTPS protected websites. In any case, according to Tavis Ormandy, he was checking out Cloudflare's network and he received some corrupt HTTP responses. After doing some research around this, he found a way to send HTTP requests to Cloudflare's network that would result in replies that had additional memory information from other Cloudflare hosted sites. As it turned out, there was a vulnerability in Cloudflare's web application that allowed for this memory leak through a buffer overrun. Among other things, one of the services Cloudflare offers is the ability to add things like ad tracking and other content to your website. What they actually do is real-time HTTP manipulation. When people request stuff from your site, Cloudflare's network will automatically add some additional stuff to HTTP headers and things like that to add some additional information to those replies. Without going into all the technical details, which Cloudflare does actually highlight on their blog, they had a mistake in their code which resulted in a memory overrun. And the real actual implication of this is in some cases when Cloudflare uh, responded to a HTTP request, it would include random information from a HTTP server's memory buffer. And even though the attacker can't uh, control what gets returned from memory, this is a very big deal. Suddenly attackers can get private information from this secure web server things like maybe the passwords of a user that is logged in or post information from the last few posts, or in the worst case, maybe even some keys as well. Now, the good news is according to Cloudflare and Ormandy, there's only a, a small couple week period within February where web servers were leaking this information. And according to Cloudflare, there's no evidence of attackers actually leveraging or exploiting this in any way. So there's only a very, very small chance uh, that any bad guy got any information from Cloudflare infrastructure. But just in case they did, what should you do? Well, first of all, this only affects sites that are Cloudflare customers. So if you don't own a site behind Cloudflare or you don't visit a site and have a login uh, uh, on a site behind Cloudflare, you're probably not affected. However, if you do own a site that is behind Cloudflare, there are some things to do. For instance, this blog post, Seclicity.org, is hosted behind Cloudflare. Now, we don't make you log into this site, so there's really no issue for you. However, we as administrators do have a login to this site, and as a result, we've changed our passwords. And more importantly, we were actually using two-factor authentication before this. So even if a password was leaked in this sort of memory disclosure, there's not much an attack can do with it. So the takeaway for people that own sites that are behind Cloudflare infrastructure, you're going to definitely want to change the passwords of all your users. I'll make sure to post a link that tells you whether or not a site is using Cloudflare. You can put any domain there and it will tell you if it's affected by this cloud bleed issue. That said, I still don't think this is a huge issue in the scheme of things. Cloudflare has fixed it. An attacker would have had to take advantage of this during a small period of time and he's not guaranteed what he would get in memory or if he got your password. As an aside, while I'm talking about a Google vulnerability research, Project Zero, you know, the organization that reports all these vulnerabilities, released yet another zero-day Microsoft flaw. A few weeks ago, I had a video talking about how they disclosed a zero-day flaw in one of the Windows functions used to handle EMF files. Today, they actually disclosed a flaw, a zero-day flaw in Internet Explorer and Edge. Basically, it's a memory corruption flaw. If some bad guy can get you to browse to a website, he might be able to take advantage of this flaw to crash your browser or even execute code as your user. So it's a pretty significant flaw. If you remember, Google automatically discloses flaws publicly if the vendor doesn't fix them in 90 days. And apparently the timer was down for this particular flaw. The researcher who found it is actually surprised that Microsoft hasn't fixed it yet. This is actually a pretty serious 
serious vulnerability. So again, I'm kind of disappointed in Google's mandatory 90-day disclosure policy because in this case, it will put IE and Edge uh, browser users at risk. Now, I hope that this is actually a flaw that Microsoft had planned to fix in the February patch day that got canceled for whatever reason, and hopefully we'll see this update in March. That said, if you're an IE or Edge user, there is a zero-day flaw out there, and there's really not much we can do about it until Microsoft actually releases this patch. Anyways, just thought CloudBleed was an interesting story. If you're a Cloudflare customer, go change the passwords of your website. And by the way, if you're a Cyclicity user, you really don't have to worry about this. That's it for today's news. Thanks for watching.